My name is Sam Vaknin and I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. Rather than let militant Islamists slaughter each other to oblivion, the West keeps choosing sides, keeps getting itself entangled in the inter internecine quagmire that is the Middle East. A policy of live and let die which would allow for the mutually assured decimation of the fractious factions of these netherlands, would have had numerous advantages. First of all, weakened by the attritive infighting, whichever the winner is, it would be compelled to collaborate with the West in order to survive. There is no substitute to the depth, innovativeness and stability of the West's capital, its markets and its technology. Second advantage, the West would have conserved its resources, while its ostensible and professed adversaries would, bleed, would have bled themselves to literal death. The neutrality of the West would have preserved its powerful and lucrative position as an arbiter and mediator of last resort. And finally, the denizens of the West would be spared the onslaught of all pervasive terrorism that they are now forced to endure. Islamist murderers and obscurantist thugs are not the first to benefit from the West's curious habit of siding with one deranged assassin against another. Consider Hitler, for example. Hitler and Nazism are often portrayed as an apocalyptic and seismic break with European history. Yet the truth is that Hitler and Nazism were the culmination and reification of European and American history in the 19th century. Europe's and the United States' annals of colonialism have prepared it for the range of phenomena associated with the Nazi regime, from industrial scale murder to racial theories, from slave labor to the forcible annexation of authority of uh, territory. Hitler invented nothing, merely adopted. Germany was a colonial power no different to murderous Belgium or Britain or the United States. What set Germany apart is that it directed its colonial attentions at the heartland of Europe rather than at Asia or Africa or Latin and Central America. Both world wars were colonial wars fought on European soil. Moreover, Nazi Germany innovated by applying prevailing racial theory, theories usually reserved to non-whites, applying these theories to the white race itself. It started with the Jews, a non-controversial proposition, but then Germany expanded this racial theory to include East European whites, such as the Poles and the Russians. Still, Hitler was right to have been shocked by the failure of his wager, that the British Empire would side with him against the equally murderous Bolshevik Stalin. Hitler and Stalin were two of a kind, mass murderers, bent on expansionist imperialist agendas, promoters of ideologies that placed the state way ahead of individual life and freedoms. It made eminent sense for the Western powers to leverage Germany to get rid of communism and prevent the rise of a lamentable and vile Stalinist empire at the very heart of Europe. The peoples of Central and Eastern Europe have paid with four lost decades for the West's erroneous choice of Stalin over Hitler. In hindsight, allowing Hitler and Stalin to decimate each other would have been far preferable and much, made much more sense. Even more so since Germany was not alone in its malignant nationalism. The far right in France was just as pernicious. Nazism and Fascism were world ideologies, adopted enthusiastically in places as diverse as Iraq, Egypt, Norway, Latin America and Britain. At the end of the 1930s, liberal capitalism, communism and fascism and its mutations were locked in mortal battle of ideologies. Hitler's mistake was to delusionally believe in the affinity between capitalism and Nazism an affinity enhanced to his mind by Germany's corporatism and by the existence of a common enemy, 
global communism. Again, the West chose sides. We played with blood and money and lost lives and decades of stagnation. Live and let die. Stay neutral. Stay on the sidelines and reap the benefits. This is the common sense strategy, not getting involved.